Hello good people. So it is Thursday the 3rd of October. Halloween is finished here. It was actually more animated than I expected. The Brits have adopted a lot of American um, Halloween style festivities. So for the first time in years we actually run out of candy here and had to turn the lights off. We did not expect that. We expected a very small smattering um, but it was bigger than expected now we're getting ready for the November 5th bonfire Guy Fawkes night celebrations see what's left of those in this day and age um, uh, the last video I talked about a couple of videos ago I talked about what's going on in the guitar community and a lot of you agreed with me that um, the videos Offerings, the video offerings in the guitar community have sort of dwindled in recent months. Uh, some of you have speculated that um, production is down in uh, for these sort of budget companies. Um, you may be right, I couldn't really say for sure one way or the other, but um, it seems like it's a bit less. And some of you very kindly pointed me to, to um, other guitar channels, many of which I knew already, uh, and some which were new to me. And one which was new to me was a bloke named Andre Flood, who's a music academic doing a, a new um, YouTube channel. And interestingly, I clicked on his uh, video, which was well presented on whether or not YouTubers in the guitar community should um, have guitar endorse endorsements or signature guitars from major companies. And um, the most recent example is of course Rick Beato, who I believe got a uh, signature guitar through Fender, was it Fender? Um, and there are others too, I forget the name of the other YouTube guitarist that has a signature guitar, mic, somebody or other. Um, and of course, all of the Andertons guys have them. Uh, well, not all of them, but some of them. Um, but that's a bit different though, isn't it? Because, uh, you know, Rob and um, the other guys in his band uh, are obviously gigging musicians. So it's, it's not, they're not just getting them as YouTubers but as uh, gigging musicians in bands as well. Although the fact that they are successful YouTubers probably plays a role in um, having uh, a signature guitar. And that's through their own company, Chapman, of course. Um, so is it right? Um, uh, Andre's video presented one or two vehement people saying, no, it is not. It, it uh, uh, subverts the normal practice that um, Signature guitars uh, are awarded to people in the recording industry who've made a name for themselves and produced a number of songs, albums, uh, have written music themselves. Whereas a lot, some of these YouTubers, as per these comments, did not go the same route. Um, they are not, in some cases, they haven't recorded any music. Um, I don't think that's true of Rick. I think he, he has, or at least he's produced music and he worked for a long time in both the educational fields and also in production um, and now is sort of a hybrid online music educator uh, does that what does his popularity alone on youtube warrant him a signature guitar well uh, andre says yes um, you know this is a new world there's new ways of doing things and um, you know if now instead of gigging and selling tons of CDs, um, musicians are starting YouTube channels and seeking out subscribers and hits on their channel, uh, monetizing and making money that way. And in some, and in some, in most cases, it's probably a more successful route than trying to go the old-fashioned route, which is set up a band, set up gigs, and um, try to sell CDs at the back of the music hall. Um, or point people to your online traffic and sell uh, online CDs. Um, it seems to all have changed and we're living in a new world so we have to adapt. And, you know, we're not going to have a 70s, 80s, 90s style 
uh, music scene where you have bands like the Beatles, Duran Duran, Nirvana, I'm picking one from each decade, breaking out and completely taking the scene by storm uh, via conventional met uh, methods, i.e. radio play, um, album production, and basically rock star icon status through MTV and other channels. That's sort of gone. Uh, now you get a lot of people who can't go that route, so they start their own channels, they produce their own music, put it out, perform it uh, as per their YouTube channels, and um, basically that is a form or a replacement of the old style gig. They are gigging and receiving money for their music. In a lot of cases, it's people playing covers or doing music that's already written, doing their own spin on things. But in a few cases, it's people doing their own original music, particularly instrumentalists who are playing fingerstyle guitar or some other instrument. Um, they do covers, but they also do their own arrangement or compositions of things. Are they entitled to being credited with a signature guitar from a record company? Um, I see both sides of the argument. Uh, I think there is a little bit of cronyism uh, probably nepotism as well in some of these awards. Um, I'm not sure all of the YouTubers um, weren't getting a signature guitar, but certainly I think some of them do. So I agree with Andre uh, in the case of people like Rick Beato, who is a music educator for, for Christ's sake. He has Brian May calling him up and praising him for his guitar work. Um, you know, that's quite an endorsement. So Maybe he's worthy of getting a signature guitar, uh, and also he's an accomplished guitar player, arranger, etc. And so are one or two others. Um, I think Mike Scallion has his own. Is it Rob Scallion has his own uh, um, signature guitar as well through uh, Chapman? Uh, and I think most of his success comes via on his YouTube channel. Uh, that's sort of a judgment call for yourself. It doesn't bother me at all. I mean, I don't really buy into the whole celebrity cult status anyway. I think there are some people that um, play in bands that are well known that are just middling guitarists that, that are fairly good at what they do and they have got um, signature guitars. And you, you know the names. Some of them are from lesser known bands. Some of them are from well known bands. And then there are some really great guitarists who haven't got signature models, um, you know, guitar icons. So I would say that it's not really a level playing field, even in the traditional world of um, uh, guitar uh, music as per CDs, radio play, that sort of thing. You know, you have, uh, you know, the guitarist from St. Vincent has a um, signature guitar, probably deserves it. Um, very nice one too. Um, and then there are people, you know, who are much higher elevated in the guitar world who don't have signature guitars. I'm not sure Mike Oldfield has one. Uh, I don't. I don't recall hearing of one. And then there are, you know, official signature guitars. We all know Les Pauls. We all know, um, you know, all the PRS signature guitars. I've got one or two of them myself. Some of the guitarists you know, some of them you don't know so well. And then there are sort of the unofficial. You know, there's a Supro David Bowie signature guitar. I don't think that's official. I don't think that went through his channels. So really, signature guitars are all over the map. Um, sometimes they are earned. Sometimes they are given out more for popularity status, maybe not uh, accomplishments on the particular instrument. Um, so it really is kind of an open book, and um, I would say that if you don't think somebody deserves one, then don't buy it. Um, if you don't know anything about the person, don't assume they don't deserve it. Um, just because you've seen somebody's YouTube channel doesn't mean that you know their whole musical output for their whole lives. I suspect a lot of the guys starting these channels, myself included, uh, musicians with CDs, recordings, records, um, studio credits, that sort of stuff. Uh, maybe, um, you know, they're, they're composers or they've written their own stuff. Whether they're doing it, still doing it or not, uh, doesn't take it away. Uh, so someone like Rick Beata, I mean, he's had, he's had a lot of different um, 
jobs, positions in the music world, and his current one has really paid off. He's very, very, very popular. Um, I like some of his videos, and I don't like some of them as much, um, but I would never say he doesn't deserve what he's got, uh, or take away the fact that he um, has a signature guitar awarded to him. Um, you know, I, I don't operate under um, punitive reasoning. I, I, I don't think, I don't take away people's accomplishments because I personally don't think they're worthy of it. Um, I would just say if I think it's a case of nepotism or cronyism, then I just don't buy that guitar. I just don't support that. I don't necessarily think um, we're in a position to disqualify people. The industry will do what it will. Um, and you either support the products or you don't. Um, if you get into the tetchy reasonings behind uh, what each musician gets, uh, I think you're in for a very unrewarding and miserable life. I mean, lots of musicians win Grammys that I don't think are worthy. And lots of musicians don't win Grammys or never awarded anything who I think are worthy. So. You know, I don't think you put too much stock into that. Uh, I think you listen to the music and make your own informed decisions uh, as to what you think those people are worth on a musical plane. Uh, you don't worry too much about what the industry or what award ceremonies uh, stipulate. Um, you know, sort of evaluate on your own terms. It would be my answer to that question. But it's an interesting topic and I've never thought of it before. I've never actually considered that question. So. Uh, I appreciate um, Andre's video for bringing that up and for speaking to it and for the people that contr contributed on his comments and I hope some of you will on this one as well. Alright folks, uh, interesting question, if you've got more throw them at me and I will try to answer them. See you next time.